So I have this connected. We can see that we're drawing about 17 milliamps. We can see that our voltage across the electrolytic capacitor is actually rising very good. Tanner, tech, tanner, tech, tanner, tanner, tech, tanner, tech, tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. Recently, one of my friends at school gave me a bag of lemons and asked if I could make a lemon battery. Now, of course that is possible because Lemon batteries are, in fact, one of the most common science fair projects for elementary schoolers. They make these lemon batteries by adding two different electrodes, and the chemical reactions inside there will allow a small current to flow. Now, I thought that this may be a little bit boring to make a video about making a lemon battery, especially because they are so common, so that, that I may take it one step further and create a lemon battery that is able to go beyond what the typical science fair project does, and those science fair projects basically are using lemons to power a tiny LED at a very dim light level or to power a little LCD clock. So in this video, we're going to try and see how we can utilize lemons to get power to drive higher current devices using some supercapacitors and some uh, boost converter circuits. So without further ado, let's take a look at the chemical reactions that make lemon batteries possible. Well, to start this project, we're going to need some lemons. These lemons were given to me by my friend Kelsey. So we're going to take some of these lemons. We're now we're going to need to get some electrodes. Now for electrodes, we can use paper clips for the zinc electrode. We can use some scrap copper wire for the copper electrode. So what we can first do is strip some of this copper wire. All right, now we can take some wire clippers and cut the raw copper into, oh, that copper flew across the room, almost falling off my table. Well, anyway, we can cut off some of these pieces of wire for use in our uh, lemon battery system. So there you go, I got three pieces of copper wire. Now, let's see what happens when we insert one piece of copper wire into the lemon, and we insert one paper clip into the lemon. You can see, and not surprisingly, that when I connect my multimeter across the two probes, we get a potential of approximately one volt between the copper and the zinc electrode. Now, let's talk about the chemical reaction that makes that voltage potential possible. And it's actually a series of two chemical reactions called oxidation reduction reactions. So we have our two electrodes. One of them is zinc, and one of them is copper. And these two electrodes are floating in a bath of electrolyte. In this case, it is citric acid from the lemon. Now, the electrolyte has hydrogen ions inside it. So, let's see what happens when we electrically connect these two um, electrodes together, like this. Inside this electrochemical cell, there are going to be two chemical reactions that are going to take place. The first one is oxidation inside the zinc. And what's going to happen is the zinc is going to break apart into two electrons and it's going to break apart into two zinc plus ions. Now what's going to happen is these two zinc plus ions are going to dissolve inside the solution and the electrons are going to be free to travel through the wire and the electrons are going to travel through here and they're going to go into the copper uh, electrode and something here is going to happen called reduction and what's going to happen is the hydrogen ions inside the acid are going to combine with the electrons to form uh, hydrogen gas and that hydrogen gas is going to bubble out of the solution and go into the air. So that's basically how this electrochemical cell works. There's two chemical reactions that are taking place in each electrode and inside the electrolyte and that causes the current to flow across here and that results in a potential difference between the two electrodes. Now because we measured approximately one volt across one of these cells, you may think that if we connect all these cells in series, we should have a very powerful three volt supply that can power LEDs and such, but that is not the case. Let's, let me demonstrate this by connecting these lemons together in series. We see an open circuit voltage of approximately uh, 2.83 volts. But what happens when we connect an LED? Ooh, the voltage drops to 1.6 volts and the LED lights only a little bit. This means that this small load from the LED is drawing so much current that these lemons cannot handle that. 
So this lemon battery, although it provides three volts of potential across the electrodes, it can't provide the adequate amperage to power almost any, any project. And so what we need to do is we need to store this voltage inside some other form. So that way we can use that voltage to run an LED. This supercapacitor is rated at 0.47 farads and it has a voltage of 5.5 volts. As you can see when I put the LED across it with this one being positive, see that the LED does not light up. Well, it lights up a little bit. But that's probably just because there's some really residual charge in the supercapacitor. If I discharge that, that light should disappear as indeed it does. So this LED, the supercapacitor, is now completely discharged. Now let's see what happens if I connect the supercapacitor across the bank of lemons. You can see that the voltage across the supercapacitor is actually increasing. Now what it's basically doing is it's using the current from these lemons to charge up the supercapacitor to a higher voltage than it was before. Now this may take a little bit because the supercapacitor has a lot of capacity for holding stuff, but this voltage should steadily rise. Now I've left the capacitor on there for maybe 30 seconds, and let's see what happens if I touch the LED to it. Ooh, interesting, nothing happens. Well that looks like this uh, lemon battery has not charged the supercapacitor at all whatsoever. So it seems that this little experiment hasn't worked completely just yet. The current is still not enough to even charge this supercapacitor remotely. So maybe we could try to add a circuit to this thing called a jewel thief and connect all the lemons in parallel so they can uh, supply a greater current. With all the supercapacitors now in parallel, we can test the voltage and see that it's going out at about 0.898 volts. So that voltage is relatively low, but it should be able to supply a much higher uh, current. And that's what we need, along with that lower voltage, to run something called a Joule Thief circuit. Now this is a Joule Thief circuit right here. And as you can see, even though the voltage coming from my power supply is only a little bit less than one volt, it's still driving this LED very brightly. So in this jewel thief, basically you've got a toroidal transformer with two windings on it. These windings are opposite, as indicated by these dots. And the two opposite windings are connected, and that goes to power, and power is approximately 0.8 volts. Now then you have these other two windings, and this winding goes to a transistor. And this winding goes through a small 1K resistor to the base of this transistor. And this end of the transistor goes back to ground. And then you have the LED, and the LED goes across this transistor to ground across it. Now basically how this works is it's a boost converter. So what happens is you have the power, and the power will flow through this coil and through the 1K resistor. And that'll turn on the transistor. Now what happens when the transistor turns on is it will bring a, a large current through this coil and it will build up that magnetic field. And as that magnetic field builds up, because these windings are opposite from each other, it'll cancel out the voltage provided through this source to the base of the transistor. And because it'll cancel out the voltage, it'll actually bring the voltage of the base of this NPN transistor to a negative voltage and that'll effectively shut down the transistor. Now when the transistor is shut down, there's still this large magnetic field held inside the inductor, and that magnetic field will be pushed through the diode inside this to ground, and that voltage produced by that magnetic potential will be a lot higher than the input voltage. That's basically how boost converters work uh, for larger power supplies when they want to boost the voltage. This is a very simplified version without any regulation. Now, you can actually use this little Joule Thief power supply to power stuff that other than uh, LED light bulbs. Now what you can do is you could take a diode and put a diode after the end. You could attach the diode to a capacitor and that current would charge the capacitor as the Joule Thief oscillates and it would charge it through the diode. Now this Joule Thief does not provide free energy does not provide infinite energy. Basically all it does is it boosts the voltage using actual schematics and actual circuits to a higher voltage than was before and that requires a larger current so if you have your led or your source drawing a, a 
a small current, then the current provided in the input will be larger. And so theoretically, with our lemons in parallel and the voltage at 0.8 volts, we should have enough voltage to drive a jewel thief that may perhaps charge a supercapacitor. So let's disassemble this jewel thief and take off the LED and see if we can hook this up to a supercapacitor with a diode. So I currently have built my little jewel thief power supply by adding a little 1N4148 diode to the output and a little electrolytic capacitor rated at 200 volts because this circuit can provide very high voltages. I will connect it to power and we'll see how much current it draws at 0.86 um, volts. So we see that the voltage, the current shoots up like uh, 25 milliamps, which may be too much, in fact, for the battery. But let's see what the voltage is of the supercapacitor, or the normal electrolytic capacitor. Sorry about that. Um, let's check that out. Holy guacamole! I'm not sure if you can see on that multimeter screen, because it's covered in wires, but the voltage across this capacitor is 27 volts. That's a crazy amount. Um, yeah, that's that's crazy. I'm not sure if this um, this lemon power supply can supply enough current to get that much voltage. But that would be very cool. So let's connect this and see what we can see. So I will set up another multimeter in current measuring mode so we can measure the current that this provides. All right, now I got my two uh, devices set up. I've got this multimeter, which is reading the voltage of the capacitor at 0.415 volts. And the only reason it's at this voltage is just because as the capacitor is discharged, it slowly regains its charge. And see, I just discharged it and it's going to go up again. And then on this multimeter, I have the current that's flowing from the lemon battery pack into the jewel thief. So this is the first time I've tried this. So let's give it a go. I'll connect this here. Oh, I saw some current flow for a second. So I have this connected. We can see that we're drawing about 17 milliamps. We can see that our voltage across the electrolytic capacitor is actually rising very good. Now remember the voltage of these lemons originally was approximately uh, 0.8 volts, and now it, the capacitor is at a voltage of 1.92 volts. So the boost converter is actually doing a good job at boosting the voltage. Now we can see that the voltage has stopped climbing at 1.9 volts, and we can see that our current has dropped to 9 milliamps, which is very interesting. Well, I've got the lemons connected again in a different way, so that way we have two lemons in parallel and one lemon in series with the two parallel lemons. We can see that we have no current flowing because it's not connected yet. Our voltage is uh, still dropping a little bit. So let me connect uh, the Jewel Thief. Oh, nice, nice. You can see we're getting a flow of about 10 milliamps. That's good. And our voltage drops off like that. It seems like we're still not getting that usable current out of those lemons. Well, this doesn't seem to be working too well. It seems like three lemons is most certainly not enough to run a uh, jewel thief at any rate. Um, these lemons just can't seem to provide the adequate current needed to run this thing. So let's see what happens if we take some more lemons and combine them together. See if we can get a higher current uh, that can flow into this thing. First of all, let me just show you how well this works when we have unlimited current from this variable power supply. I have my power source here, and well, this is gonna plug into my power supply if I can find the lead somewhere. There we go, right here. You can see that, wow, I connect it. We're getting a very huge um, draw of current. As you can see, that uh, jewel thief is jumping up to like 18 volts. So these lemons, they just can't provide 20 milliamps of current. That's a lot. So here, let's connect this lemon that's resting on my multimeter. See if we can get this lemon to uh, help us in the quest for more power. Well, now I've got my lemons. Uh, all four of them are in parallel. So hopefully we should get a lot more current for our boost converter. Still got my two multimeters set up in the same formation as before. Let's connect it. Wow, looks like we're getting a lot more current and it looks like our voltage just shot up a lot. Seems like increasing the current capacity of these lemons allowed our voltage to 
rise to about 1.6 volts, which is far above the voltage of these lemons. But for some reason, the voltage is dying down. Now, even that voltage isn't enough to adequately power an LED. That's about the voltage of a AA battery. And since it's going into a small 10 microfarad capacitor, that voltage goes away very quickly. Well, anyway, I have the, the lemons connected in a different formation now. They're in... We have got two lemons in parallel, two lemons in parallel, actually three lemons in parallel. And then those pairs or pair and triplets are in series with each other. And I just tested it again on the Jewel Thief and we still weren't getting a very good flow. So what I'm going to try and do is connect a supercapacitor to this power bank and see if we can charge a supercapacitor to 1.5 volts or something. The supercapacitor can provide the adequate amperage to run this little Jewel Thief circuit. And so let me connect the supercapacitor up to the lemon bank. First, let me connect my multimeter up so that way we can read live readings of what the voltage is. There we go, 1.471 volts. Now let's connect the supercapacitor up to it and see how fast we can charge this thing. Oof, that drops the voltage a lot. If I connect the supercapacitor, the voltage, well, if I can connect it good at least, the voltage drops significantly for the lemon power bank and it only goes up very slowly. So let's see if I... No, let me add a diode to that. Maybe... No, actually a diode has too low of a forward voltage. Uh, let me see if I can charge that supercapacitor with that lemon power bank. You can see that these lemon power banks don't provide very much current at all. My supercapacitor is at a whopping voltage of 130 millivolts. Great. Uh, these lemons are, cannot provide very much current at all. They can, buy, they can provide enough voltage or potential to read on here, but the chemical reaction happening inside here isn't very good at all. Now, this could partially be due to the fact that I'm using paper clips, and although those are zinc, they're just zinc coated, so the zinc coating could have already dissolved in that uh, oxidation reaction. But still, it should be at least working a little bit right now with these lemons. It's crazy. These lemons can't even provide one milliamp. So the voltage just drops so drastically after you connect it, even a small load to this thing that it goes away. These lemons have a very high impedance voltage source. I mean, we could see that it was still able to get the Jewel Thief oscillating, so it had enough power to do that, but that really doesn't take that much power to do. But they weren't able to power hardly anything. Now, perhaps the reason that this whole thing didn't work was that the, the zinc and copper didn't have a big enough surface area to facilitate a chemical reaction that would allow for such a large current to flow. Or maybe it's some other reason. Alright, those lemons made a huge mess on my table. They got their lemon juice everywhere, all over my every probe. So, yeah, I'm going to use this plate now to put all my lemons on so the juice doesn't get everywhere. Probably should have done that in the beginning. But, yeah. Well, you know, um, this lemon experiment may not have worked out completely, but I sure did learn some important stuff about lemon circuits. And, you know, you guys have stayed through my entire video, so I think it's uh, about time for a reward. I'll fire up my ZVS high voltage power supply, and we'll see if we can fry these lemons. <laughs> Now, through the making of this video, I fully expected to be able to create something with these lemons, so that way we would actually be able to drive a Jewel Thief circuit, and in doing so, be able to charge a supercapacitor to a relatively high voltage, enough to run an LED. But it seemed that these lemons cannot provide current hardly at all. They can't even provide one milliamp of current, which hardly anything. So these lemon batteries aren't really good at all for providing any kind of power or anything, but it was still a cool project and I was able to learn some stuff and hopefully you were able to learn some stuff about lemons and lemon batteries 
and jewel thief circuits and stuff and see some cool entertainment from frying the lemon peel well, well as you can see not every experiment works out as well as you thought it may have i thought this experiment was going to turn out awesome and as you can see it didn't turn out well at all it didn't work but that's how a lot of experiments go when you see videos of people doing something on youtube where they have some kind of project and it looks like it works first time it didn't work first time projects don't always work first time and i'll still take a look into these lemons and see if i can find a way for it to adequately run a jewel thief circuit so i can charge a super capacitor and use it for something like running an led thank you for watching and stay tuned for next time now i'd like to use this moment to disprove some of these bogus claims and videos that someone plugs a usb cord into a lemon and they plug it into their phone and immediately charges their phone now that is so far from the truth because first of all these have the same exact metal inside the usb cord so no chemical reactions will take place second of all as we saw even when we had three lemons connected or even four lemons connected to each other it was barely able to provide even one tenth of a milliamp at one volt much less providing let's say 500 milliamps that it takes to charge a phone at 5 volts. Those claims are totally bogus.